can see our garlic is popping up, which is very, very exciting. We planted it in the fall, October, I believe, maybe even September, and it overwintered. So you have to put a lot of mulch on it. We put a lot of mulch. I went through, took some of it off. I'm actually gonna be putting some of the hay back because I don't want it to get weeds. Normally I would just add nitrogen at this point because they put on a lot of you know green leafy growth and that helps them with their bulb. But because last year we had smaller bulbs, I'm also gonna be adding some bone meal to help them with that. I want them to have nice big bulbs. They're off to a really good start. Really, really thick stems and leaves coming out. So I'm fairly excited for this. We grew a lot more this year and I'm hoping that it's enough for an entire year and maybe even enough to plant again in the fall. We have another big project that we're working on over here. Well, it probably doesn't look like much. It's pretty messy. This is a strawberry bed and you can tell it's just really low. We haven't been able to add more soil to it because they're perennials. We started with 30, I think, little strawberry crowns and we have so many now. I'm pretty sure we have well over 200. Eric and I need to really go through. We're going to dig them all up. We're gonna pick the biggest crowns. We're gonna put them back in rows, replenish the row, do lots of bone meal. I've had too much nitrogen here. We've had a lot of leafy growth, not as many strawberries. So it's, it's gonna take a while. It's definitely gonna take a while. It's gonna be a project for sure. Okay, so that's a strawberry. That's actually two strawberry crowns in there and they are already starting to break dormancy. They're forming their little buds. This is a perfect time. Ideally, you'd wanna to get to them a little bit earlier, but our ground just thawed. So this is the first time we can really do it. There's a lot of daughter plants in here, like I was saying, probably hundreds. And that's totally okay to plant those ones, but we wanna make sure this year that we're snipping all of them. Last season, it got away from me. So we're gonna make this a much better organized bed. We're gonna to have to have some sort of organization, right? Like, there's a lot of runners, so that's gonna be, you know, Okay, the rake's really doing nothing, huh? Uh, I don't even see how this is possible. It is possible. <laughs> you just have to have optimism. <laughs> I know, I, I told you. At least 100 in there. That's a lot. It's just these big ones that are really obvious because they have all these runners. All right, this is going pretty fast. And we've got a lot of really nice size plants, the mom plants and probably some of the daughter plants from two years ago. Um, and then there's a lot of little small ones. We're probably not gonna be planting those. What we're doing is just getting everything snipped off and it's very messy. And then we're coming through, we're gonna grab all the roots and then line them up. So this is one of those garden projects I thought was gonna take forever, but I think we've been out here for maybe like 45 minutes or an hour. It's going pretty good. About halfway through digging them up. Really looking forward to strawberries this year. We got about 40 new plants planted and they look really good. We've got a lot of extras. I don't know what we're gonna do with them. We've got our bone meal on and we're gonna be watering this in, putting a whole bunch of straw in between the plants because we do not want weeds and we're gonna keep up on the runners this year. Once they start getting on growth. Well, we finished these strawberries and the garlic. We have a little bit of work to do in the high tunnel. It is just totally full in here with plants and we want to plant our peppers in this row like last year. We wanna do that in the next few days. So I need to clear out some space in here. It, we have a really glorious week of weather coming up and all of our hardier crops like the coals, can, coal crops can go outside. So we're gonna move cabbages, kale, things like that outside and get them ready for planting out there.
Baby block. Look at oh. the roots. Ah! Oh my gosh. See what I said? They're ready to be planted. I was saying this is the new green mustard and brown corn. more hot peppers. I think I should have some bell peppers in this. Good morning. We are doing some planting today, but we are first bringing out five totes of plants out to our high tunnel. Some of these have, I think it's from being dry. I'm fairly certain they're just dry. Is that what you're thinking? I think you just need one more, right? I may only need one more. I don't <laughs> Sorry, I wish it grows big too. I wonder how they're gonna do. I'm excited. Everything does good. It'll do great. I think they're gonna do great. They're not. Hey, if it starts to... getting big, better call the Alaska State Fair. Tell them we're coming. I don't think that we gave her enough space to get as big as Right. <laughs> Extra fertilizer for the OS cross, right? Sure. Green, uh, dark brown, dark, dark soil, whatever you know what I mean. Dark black kind of. Compost, yeah. Compost soil. Don't move, bro. Don't move. I'm not in the way. <laughs> Do you see him? We finished the cabbages. We have a lot of cabbages in here. At the end, we did our OS cross. We gave those lots of room. We've got Aubervillers, we've got Ruby, and we're trying a few different varieties this year that are new to us, Dewinda and Fiddler Kraut. Then Copenhagen, a bunch of Copenhagens. I really like that one, it does great. I've got some Napa cabbage, a new variety for us. This is Red Express. And then we go to Presto, and we finish up the row with our cauliflowers. We're growing Snow Crown, Snowball. I added some Veronica cauliflower in the end, and another OS Cabbage Cross. Very exciting stuff. Got the Dow Dundee. Hey, what's your name? It's pretty rare to see anything on this thing, huh? Do you get a lot of weeds on the edge, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a row. Yeah, it looks great. Broccolis are in. We've got some Veronica cauliflower and we've got some Brussels sprouts, and we're gonna hit those with the alfalfa meal, and then we're heading in for a snack. So we've got a pretty cool snack we're gonna try. We've got some Ritz crackers and cream cheese. We wanted to try our smoked and canned hooligan this way, so we're going to give this a try. 
looking forward to this stuff. We've already opened this one up and it smells really, really good. That one will get the fish head. Okay, fish head on a cracker, bottoms up. Really good. Tastes like a little like seafood, but it's really good. Mm, try one. They're good. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't even buy any more. That would be really good on pizza or like a focaccia bread or a flatbread. I think solid. Oh yeah, for sure. That's good, awesome. All right, next up, we are working on planting a bunch of greens. We have mustard, tat soy, baby bok choy, mizuna, arugula, spinach, you name it, we've got a lot. I like to call it our green row and we keep it all in one area because that's the same spot that we plant our garlic in the fall. And these crops in general don't really last that long. They grow best in the spring when it's cooler. They definitely bolt with the longer light hours that we are getting. So it's super simple to have them all in the same area for harvesting. Your way? Right there. Uh, walking out there. Oh. <laughs> I'd have to go out there. Is there a storm in Berlin? Uh, yeah, there is. It for appears sure. to be, but that is the case, huh? Well, we both have worked up quite the appetite and for dinner tonight, we're going Afghan style. We wanted to try something a little bit different. We're making a meal, I believe it's called a shack, A-S-H-A-K. I'm pretty excited to make it. Yeah, Afghan dumplings, we just wanted to try something new and we had most of the ingredients. We're gonna substitute a few of them and just try our best, but we're very excited for it. I'm gonna start with the dough. Yep. One of the that I don't remember. Flour. Two cups of water. Cool. We're going to start with two cups of flour and just a teeny tiny bit of salt and some olive oil. And these are called dumplings, but to us, or at least to me, a dumpling is more like a chicken and dumpling soup type of thing. But these are almost like a wonton wrapper that we're trying to make, so it's going to be like a little stuffed wonton wrapper. I'm going to add just a little bit of water and we've got to get the dough kneaded for a long time, I think like 10 minutes. Well, the recipe calls for beef. We're using ground moose meat and we got a leek. We went and bought this from the store. We just ran out of our frozen leeks, which was a bummer. So we got to wait for ours to be ready. And we got an onion. We're going to get started on our sauce. 
and let this dough sit for a little while and then we're gonna be rolling it out. And I've got our last tomato sauce. So, good way to use it. <laughs> So we're going to saute our onions till they're almost done, and I'm also going to start some lentils in this pot. Onions are just about done at this point, and we're going to take them and we're going to remove them from the pan, and then we're going to cook our moose meat in the same pan here. All right, we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients to this meat since it's just about done. We're gonna put the onions back in there. We're gonna do salt, turmeric, red pepper flakes, and then we're gonna add that can of tomato sauce we have, and then I'm also gonna put about four cloves of garlic in here. Okay, the sauce is tasting really good. I don't know if it's that turmeric or what, but we're gonna add our lentils in here because it's almost done. And then we're going to get started on making our little wrappers for the dumplings and also the filling for the dumplings. Our dough looks ready. Let me get this rolled out. I'm going to get started on the filling. The filling we're going to do is a leek. We're going to do some chives. This is the first thing we harvested from the garden, isn't it? Yeah. Chives. It calls for cilantro. We're going to do coriander seed. We're going to grind some of that up. Uh, salt and pepper. And we're going to mix it up in some oil and we're going to be stuffing it in those little Wonton? <laughs> yeah, dump dumplings. Dumplings. It's really exciting. It smells really good. How, like, super thin on these, right? They did squares, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Yep, yep, yep. Smell that. Ooh. Fresh. Ooh. It almost smells like citrus, like you put lemon on it or something. The coriander. It's time to stuff these. These are very thin, so let's see what happens. Just like that. Okay. I won't put too much and then that looks good. Pull it over and pinch it down. Is that how they did it? She went like she I saw a lot like of that. them did this. Oh, that's beautiful. So I saw a lot of them do that. That looks good. A yeah. shack, right? A dumpling. <laughs> a dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I square them off. No, those are perfect. So really don't have to be that precise with these. Those are that's a good looking thing you're doing over there. Thank you. Thank you. Look at that, that's thin. Oh, my master could do it like that. How long did you go to school to learn to do that? 16 months. Hard time. Aerial school of cooking. And hard knocks. Well, these things are they are looking awesome. We got some water heating up over there. We're going to boil these, and then we're going to cook them. And we got one more thing to make, and that's going to be like the garlic yogurt sauce. So we're almost ready for dinner. So we're going to be plating these dumplings on like a yogurt sauce and and we're using kefir. It's a sour sour yogurt. And two, maybe maybe a cup and a half. Oh my gosh. That yeah. looks good. I'll yeah. take a drink of that. Okay. Um I see a splash of salt. Everything's going to be salty on a splash. The garlic. Garlic. That's how many cloves is that? Just two? Two small ones. Mushed up. Eric mashed up some garlic cloves. So we're going to add that in and try to really work that into the yogurt somehow. These little dumplings, they almost look like a ravioli to me. Yeah. That's, that's really what good. they remind me of, like a little, is that a tortellini, is that what that's called? But they look good, I cannot wait to try these. Yeah, tortellini. Let's put a bunch of them on here because we're hungry. Interesting flavors. I know. I like the turmeric. And then the mangoes on top. I really like the filling. Yeah. And the yogurt, you haven't tried, have you tried the yogurt with the garlic? No? No. The meat, we still gonna add the meat. Oh, I got this to fit one more on there at least, because these are good. It looks beautiful. It's, it looks like a yellow velvet or something. We're gonna dive right in. I'm super excited. Please. Cheers.
Man. I want to say I think I've developed like a sixth sense because every time I put food to my mouth now, my nose smells it. <laughs> and I feel like I taste it through my nose. Mm. That is killer. Killer, killer, killer. Just unique flavors. Yeah. Having the leek and the chives inside yeah. the ravioli, it's like you bite into it, it's just like freshness. It's just like they're barely cooked because I only cooked the dumplings for about maybe four minutes. And that yogurt on the bottom. I know. The sauce. The yogurt. Tell you what, this is pretty easy to make. It's pretty easy to make. It's really good. We substituted the lentils for this recipe, but you can find most of these ingredients really easily. It's really, really good. Wow. My favorite part is the filling, but actually all of the combination and the mint, it's not even odd on there. It's mint, just yeah. good. Very impressed with this. Very, very happy. We're going to enjoy the rest of our meal. And we're going to have some more. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Mm. I can't get over it. I'm in love with those. It's my favorite part of the day, and that's when I get to have a nice hot cup of coffee. So it's about 8 in the morning on a Saturday. And we had rain last night, but we're heading outside because we got some more work to do. Well, it rained last night, which is really nice because when you plant things, it just works out really well when it rains. Uh, Eric and I finish this row. This is where we're going to be doing our squash and our corn. And we like to put plastic down. It keeps the plant's roots a lot hotter. And we also have these hoops because we're going to be covering our corn early season before it gets too tall. We planted a lot of things back here. Finished up with most of our greens. We've got kohlrabi, purple green, some mixed kales. We've got a dazzling blue kale. I really like that. It's an Italian kind and some collards at the end. So this is a pretty exciting time of the year because we're getting all our crops out here for the year and they start super small. This is a seed, most of them, and they turn into these big beautiful plants by the end of the year. We went ahead and put some straw down and I really like it as a mulch. I don't do it on all our plants but I'm doing it to cut down on the weeds to kind of prevent them from getting a jump start since there are weeds out here and they typically grow first. 
This row is completely done. It looks great. Very exciting stuff. And we're gonna head into the high tunnel to plant some peppers today. And then we also have to direct sow radish sheets. Watch out when we get to the rows. Oh, really oh yeah, this one. What are we hitting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll bring back in the celery actually. No, you know, it's actually pretty warm out there. I don't know, I may not like this one. Right well, we picked up this little grasshopper and also a five gallon bucket of some local fish bone meal. It's made out of white cod up here in Alaska, so we're excited to try this. We're gonna be using this on the peppers. We're also gonna be using kind of our go-to fertilizer, and this is uh, BioLive. This is down to earth, so we're gonna get started planting a lot of peppers, ton of them. Oh, I hit her in the head. Well, we have 115 pepper plants, which is far too many, and we're kind of making a tough decision. I think we can plant in the 80 range it's about how many we did last year. It's very, very tight, but it works really well. We usually do really well on peppers in this high tunnel. Gets a little tricky with the aphids, but we're able to combat that. We've got banana peppers. We have a bunch of hot peppers, jalapenos and serranos. Anaheim we're growing quite a few bell peppers. Those do really well in here. And all in all, we really like pepperoncinis. We really like the hot peppers and we just never seem to have enough. We always seem to have a little bit too many of the bell peppers. So we're going to try to cut back on those a little bit. these clear cups they like totally make it so you cannot over water oh clear like solo cup do you do you not want a shovel no i got i'm the human shovel no this isn't too tight this is perfect yeah somehow we like we've done it tighter <laughs> we're like the masters of <laughs> planting it tight right we got a small house we got a small high tunnel we got a, a lot yeah. of stuff comes out of here so it's all good i know i'm just <laughs> What'd you water them yesterday? Uh, I don't know. You gotta water them really well when you put them out here because they can get so hot when you're not paying attention. Look at that nice beauty right there. Oh, it was nice. Yeah, it's just dry. Dry as a bone. That's okay. The tomatoes have really hold their, held their water now. can't trust you out here. Eric, I'm not joking. Do you think I'll be okay? I, I do think I'll be okay, yeah. I'll let you do the honors, baby. The last one? Last one. All right. All right. Dang, good job. You really massacred the road. That's good, though, because I need that to get these. We need it. It was too dry. I should have really worked it a little better. Hey, I did a major party foul. I forgot four plants. Forgot what? I forgot to do four plants. Maybe you could do them? Go on your side over there. No. There's like four, three or four. This stuff's really nice and pretty excited about it. And you missed those four? <laughs> I just, how did I? Because I just forgot. Yeah, we had a celebration and everything. Try to really, if you don't mind, water it off their little yeah. leaves because you know I'm pretty lazy. That almost sounds like a jersey. It does. We weren't there yeah, earlier yipping. Well, the plan with this row was to come through with the hose and like saturate this row because you know it hasn't been um, watered in a long time and it's really dry. But we forgot to do that. So we dug our holes, we put our fertilizer, we did uh, two watering cans full to try to saturate deep down. And this row, we kind of wanted to plant on the edge. So we lost a lot of soil. We're bringing in more topsoil and a little more compost. We're going to finish planting these off. 96 peppers, most we've ever done. We'll see how it goes.
We finished up in the high tunnel. We put some straw over the tomatoes just to help suppress the weeds. Since the peppers are so densely planted, I'm not worried about it. We have to do our radishes tonight and everything else is looking really good. We've got about half the garden planted and that means we have about half more to go. Pretty exciting mid-May and we're chugging along. <laughs> 